specific examples of it that we are taking advantage of every day uh, that's measurable today, visible today. Uh, you only have to read the newspaper or National Geographic or any um, uh, magazine and you'll find such evidence. Uh, with that said, essentially where I'm coming from, long time and the evolutionary uh, processes can be proven. And by the way, as a geologist, I don't focus as much as biologists do on animal and plant evolution. I'm talking about evolution of the universe, of this earth, our particular uh, planet and crust that we're familiar with, the process that's going on right now. What I'd like to focus on, and particularly because there are a number of young people here, and I want to keep things at a level where they can understand it, I've limited my visual aids to something fairly complex, A and B, and two spheres. I'm actually copying Albert Einstein, but uh, he is dead and doesn't hold the rights anymore to this, so I can use it. <laughs> In A, we're looking at a circle of light, which he described as representing knowledge. And the darkness here, that awful educated green of a blackboard, pretend that that is the blackness of ignorance, of no knowledge, the unknown. B is when, a time later, there is more knowledge. And what Einstein said in effect, and I'm not going to try and quote him exactly, was that as the diameter of a circle of light, meaning knowledge, increases, so too does the circumference of darkness around it. This is a fairly subtle way of saying for every question we answer, two more arise. And so as our knowledge becomes greater, However, it's contributed. I'm not saying the scientific knowledge, it's the knowledge of Homo sapiens. As that knowledge becomes greater, so there will be much more that we will not understand and we'll have questions about. It is the, the very food of the scientists that there are questions to be asked. And for you young people, if you are not convinced that to do so would be to follow the devil's path, you can rest assured that there will be questions for you to try and solve and answers to be found and things to be learned regardless of how much the present generation does indeed work. Historically, in the black area of ignorance, we have ascribed to myth and to religion and to God as the cause of development for things we don't understand. In fact, today, if you read your insurance policy, you'll see it says, not accountable for acts of God. Now that's a nice phrase, but it means it's something that Homo sapiens and technology cannot as yet explain. Now, the good pastor and I and Dr. Hovind, how many, how are we doing time? Five, plenty of time, are well aware that all of you live in a high-tech world in which the fruits of science are things that you count on and depend upon every day to get here and to perhaps even have heard us yesterday. And one cannot be unaware of the fact that through scientific inquiry we challenge and improve and in doing so, we come closer to the truth. We make all kinds of mistakes. That is exactly the scientific process. When you think you have some hypothesis of value and you have some evidence to support it, you publish, not as final truth. Unfortunately, the media have not learned that. And they will publish anything that some young PhD puts out as fact when in fact that is put out there for the rest of the world, be they scientists or not, to criticize, to try and test and retest and repeat and to fine tune and criticize. And slowly but surely we eliminate the false and come closer to the truth. We now have pi out to several hundred decimal points. Someone is working on getting it out to thousands and millions. 
because our technology enables us to read more carefully with more sensitive instruments, we can always improve. It is not to say that we have established the ultimate truth. It is merely the direction we're headed. And as such, we try to expand that circle of light, not to disprove anyone or anything, nor to prove anything, but to increase our understanding. And the test of that is the efficacy of that knowledge, that is, the utilitarian, the effectiveness, the way it can be applied. And I point to all the things that we do that show, indeed, that science has not been wrong. Indeed, scientists, young practitioners and old practitioners, have published things that have been corrected. That self-correcting process is the lifeblood of research and investigation, of necessary inquiry. Any of you have learned from talking to your members of your family, friends, or colleagues to get another perspective and perhaps change the course of action through that interaction. And that's the whole idea of the scientific community's publications. To grab specific statements in a point in time by someone is to take merely that which fits when you're trying to prove something. Science is not trying to, nor is it able, to prove or disprove the presence of God. It merely is dealing with the way the universe works. And I'm not then saying that God is ignorance, but if one looks at the world and the way we operate and the history of Homo sapiens, the species has attributed to God things it didn't understand, and once it understands it, it seems less miraculous. And that's a sad thing, but it's human nature. In that sense, then, there is a hostility toward science which wrests things away from the unknown. Consider meteorology a hundred years ago, very crude, and nobody believed it. Today we are getting much more sophisticated, and the weatherman is wrong. But it does not mean that he's not right 95% of the time, even to the point where they have been sued, the National Weather Service has been sued because they didn't predict a particular weather event that cost the man to lose his ship. Predicting earthquakes, predicting volcanoes, predicting floods are all things that we are on the brink of better and better prediction, the efficacy of scientific investigation. It is not perfect yet. And it never will be. But as that circle of light increases, we do get better, but we have more questions. So to say that geology has mistakes, what science has, that's only to say the sun rises in the east, when in effect our earth is rotating and the sun is relatively motionless as we do. And that should be sufficient for us. Intro. I'd, I'd like to make a couple questions back. It seems like a contradiction of terms, and maybe I misunderstood. But you said for every question we answer, there are two more questions. That appear. That appear. Much like when we magnify to see something clearer, we now see additional things we didn't see before. And that's what the electron microscope or anything has done, the telescope shows us what we looked at, and then we see things we hadn't seen, so. Then at the same time, we challenge and evaluate and come closer to the truth. Are we coming closer well, right. to the truth with more questions? Only within that sphere of light, in which we have the infinite darkness, which is all questions that we're not even aware of. And one other as a mathematician. Um, a mathematician. Well, no, I'm about oh, to say that. Oh, okay. No, no, don't quote me on that one. It's all right. I was a math major. And, That's all right. You talked about how they're 